welcome. I'm here with two fabulous guys, and we are going to be telling you about a workshop that we'll be doing this Wednesday, April 17th at Vibes. And that's right there by Newgate Mall. And we hope to see you there. It's between 5 and 7 p.m. And we're going to be talking about clearing your mind. So each of us have different experiences with clearing your mind. And I personally will be talking about forgiveness and how you can do forgive people and how that clears your mind and more and steve here what will you be talking about i'll be talking about beginning my beginnings in watching my mind and s starting to watch the thoughts that flow through and realizing that each word itself carries very little of reality and that i was confusing words, knowing a lot of words about things as if I knew about reality. And as I watched that more and more, I began to naturally, sort of organically, become more aware of non-word, holistic reality. So I'll be talking about getting to a sense of calm and peace and away from the torment of worrisome thoughts, um, fear-based thinking, and into a more relaxed living, state of living, state of being. That sounds great. We can all use that. How I did, can for sure. Yeah, I do not worry. <laughs> and Marty, what will you be talking about? I'm going to be discussing uh, some of the Ayurvedic approaches. Um, the fact that there are yogic sciences uh, that have long funny names like pranayama and prachahara. And what they basically mean is uh, pranayama is yogic breathing because where the breath goes, the mind follows. So once you learn to control the breath, you can learn to control your mind. And prachahara is the ancient science of withdrawal of the senses. So when you put these two ancient sciences together in a very practical application, you can start to control your mind, you can control your emotions, and therefore you can enter that clarity that we're all seeking. So it's tried and true methods that are thousands of years old. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good stuff. I meet, I meet people sometimes and they think that their emotions are in control, right? Mm. They think other people can make them do something or they'll say, you made me mad. So how will this help, th help them? Well, this is going to help empower each person as an individual because that's what we're really doing is we're taking back our own personal power and our own authority. And when you start to really analyze how things work, how your mind and your emotions relate to one another, this is gonna put you back in the driver's seat and it's very empowering and uh, leads to a lot of a lot of peace of mind. So it, it will definitely help you to get out of that feeling like you're being controlled. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing stuff. I feel peaceful already. How about you, Steve? <laughs> I do too. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. now you are in this workshop because you have a book. Can you show yes. us that? And I know that you've been kind of on a tour talking to people about your book and the things in it. What have you learned that people worry about as you've been out and about talking about your book? Well, people worry about all sorts of things that I can see it reflected in what I worry about. Finances, health, um, mostly it's stories that we create that bring us tension that if we could s step back and take a wider view, we would see the stories come, create all sorts of tension, and then after a little while they just dissipate or they turn into a new story. So I'll have a pain in my body in one spot and I'll focus my attention on the trees or my feet as they're walking. And after a little bit, I think, oh, I don't notice that pain anymore. But in a few minutes later, I notice another pain. <laughs> so I notice that the flow of life is very much an up and down thing. 
and I'm coming to see that accepting that flow as a passing occurrence, which goes with watching my thoughts. So a thought will come through a worry, oh, I didn't get back to that person in time, or I really need to do this and this and this and this. Um, much of my mind can be in the future so much and it can overwhelm me. But I, I've, I see that if I accept the flow, it simply passes through and then I find that underlying piece that really was always there, I think, but it was covered up by a bunch of thought layers that, that seemed so important, but once you see how fast they dissipate, you, I, I've come to see the lack of importance of these thought layers, these stories. So it's so wonderful to get to this place of peace. It's just, whew, not a, it, it, it's up and down, but it's a much deeper kind of um, sense of groundedness than I've ever experienced. So it's a lot about letting go of your thoughts. It is. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I think that brings me to my subject that I'll be talking about with forgiveness. <laughs> so since I've put it out there in the universe that I want to talk about forgiveness, a lot of things have come up that I wanted to forgive. And even just talking to, to both of you, right? Because you talk about letting go of some things and to not getting caught up. And then I think about the times that I've done that, right? So I have to forgive myself for uh, the yes. times that I haven't done yes, that, yes, yes. right? And then you talk about your breath and I think, oh, I have created so many problems for myself because I haven't breathed right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that it all centers around forgiveness. Because if we can let go of the ways that we're not perfect, mm -hmm. right, then it, it opens us up to being able to be more perfect. Because we've, we're not so concentrated on the, the negative. Right. And so my book is called Spiritual Reflections, and it's it's the my columns that I had in the Standard Examiner that were in the faith section, and most of those I realized were about forgiveness because that was really the subject that I needed the most help on. And what people don't realize about forgiveness, and that I'll be talking about, is that we do that totally for ourselves. So it doesn't matter if the person who offended us deserves to be forgiven or not. What matters is that we need to be healthy. And sometimes people will hang on to something because the other person did never say they're sorry. And that will be one of the things that I'll be talking about. You can actually write yourself a letter. That's all the things that you hope that person said to you. And so then you can really get the thing that you needed, even though they, they might not be supplying it. So I'm super it excited about great. that. Awesome. I like yeah. that. So we're hope, hoping that you'll join us at Vibes. And I'm super excited for the workshop. Me too. We'll see Bye. you on Wednesday, April 17th.